Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. This week, Andrew interrupts his normal broadcast to teach on the simple steps to unlocking your ability to receive from God and how to experience God's blessings on a daily basis. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to a very special edition of our Gospel Truth broadcast. And this week, starting yesterday and then all through the end of this week, I've been having on Carrie Pickett, and she is the director of our Caris Bible College, not only here in the United States, but also worldwide. She's vice president of our ministry, and she is a blessing most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. That's, 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 that's a win. <laughs> and so Carrie came to our school and she just turned 18 years old, yeah, graduated from school, and then you went to Russia for 16 years. Yep. Found her husband, Mike, over there. He was yeah. also a missionary. And yeah. uh, they've been back now for, I think it's seven years yeah. that you've been with me. And they are the vice presidents of our ministry. And this week, what we're doing, we are teaching on imagination. I've got a book entitled The Power of Imagination. And uh, we're talking about that subject, but we aren't offering the book as such. We're offering what uh, Carrie's calling a master class. And so tell them what that is. Yeah, so we're really excited that you are uh, joining us. I think this is this is a powerful week of just igniting how to receive from God. And that's exactly what the master class is about. It's four intense hours where you'll be sitting with Andrew, myself, and my husband. We're gonna just be walking through much deeper of these concepts because during this time, we can only scratch the surface, but there's so many important things that you need to learn. So it's four hours of a master class with extra work worksheets and bonus things that are really going to help you learn how to not only receive from God, but activate your God-given imagination to live at a level that you're not living at right now. And we want to invite you into that. So I'm excited that we're going to be able to share more of that and how you can get that at the end of this. And so yesterday we began to give a little introduction on this. And basically all we did was just show that this is the reason that so many Christians who are truly born again and their life has been changed. If they were to die, they'd go to heaven, but they aren't living the victorious life. There's very little difference between them and their unsaved neighbor. And I was sharing out of Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, that where it says, The Lord will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon him. That's the Hebrew word yetzer, and it literally, it means conception. And it, the, if you take that same word, it's translated imagination five different times in the Old Testament. So the part of your mind, the thinking part that sees things with your heart instead of with your eyes, that is where you conceive things. And the reason so many Christians aren't seeing the birth of the miracles and the things that God wants to do in your life is because you've never conceived them in your imagination. Yeah. So that's kind of what we were talking about mm -hmm. yesterday. Let me use just a couple of other verses here. I already used Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, where it says that the Lord saw that the imagination of men's heart was only evil continually. Here in Genesis chapter 11 and in verse 5, it says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man builded. This is talking about the Tower of Babel. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. And I could literally spend a long time developing this and amplifying on it, but I just want to point out that the Lord said that anything you can imagine is doable. And this is the very problem is that also, I could say it this way, only the things that you can imagine are doable. If you can't see it on the inside, you'll never see it on the outside. And this is where so many Christians are missing it is because we are plugged into this world and we're letting the unbelief and the negativity of this world paint a negative picture on the inside of us. And uh, we aren't taking our imagination and using it to actually let the Word of God paint a positive image or what we were talking about yesterday, hope, per, uh, present hope on the inside of us. Yeah. And I think the the importance of imagination and 
uh, is when we talk about the word, because if you can, you can imagine your future all day long according to the world's standards and the world's ideas and the world's philosophies. But the Bible says in Colossians 2 verse 8, it says, be careful that you're not taken captive by this world's philosophies. And the word philosophy is uh, that when you, when you break it down, it's a system of thinking. Mm -hmm. And so the way that you think, the way that you're imagining, the way you're activating your thought process, you can be taken captive by it. That's why I said, be careful that you're not taken captive by this world's philosophies rather than on the basic principles of Christ. And so when we put the word of God in, that's what we start to see and imagine. And that's, that's really what brings freedom. And so now you can start walking in the power of that. And man, people need to get a hold of that because so many are held captive. They're Christians, but they're captive Christians because they're still thinking according to this world. But you know, the scripture says, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And that's an absolute, uh, unchangeable truth. And if I'm going to say, I'm saying this in love, please don't take it the wrong way. But if your life is an absolute mess, you have seen it that way. <laughs> and somebody may think, no, no, this is not what I want. I'm not saying it's what you want, but it is the way that you have seen it. And many people have just been programmed to think negatively, to expect the worst, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You can take that same power and you can reprogram yourself to where you start seeing things positively. And this is what we're talking about. Your imagination is your ability to see something with your heart that you can't see with your physical eyes at that moment. Yeah, you can't remember anything without your imagination. Your imagination is how you remember. And there's a scripture on that in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 18, where David was praying a prayer and he said, Oh Lord, keep this forever in the thoughts of the imagination of their heart. And he was talking about memory. This is how you remember is you have a picture. Yeah. You know, Carrie, I went back uh, to where I grew up and there was this little place that was uh, a forest and it was so thick that when we rode our bikes through there as a kid, I mean, you'd come out of bright sunshine and it'd be so dark in there that you, your eyes would have to adjust. And I just remembered this in my imagination as being this huge forest. And it was, you know, it was just a special place. I went back about 10 years ago and looked at that place and it wasn't over 20 or 30 feet long, but there was just this little clump of trees. But in my imagination, it was this, you know, magical place and we'd go in there and play and, and it That's isn't fun. the same. That's your imagination. You see things yeah. and uh, whether you know it or not, that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy on the inside. And what I think is why this topic, you know, people may say, well, why, why is this so important to talk about? Because Again, I, I believe imagination, once you start to see yourself, like you said, if somebody's a, a mess, it's because you've seen yourself that way. But you don't just see yourself because once you start seeing yourself a certain way, you start speaking that way. You start saying, well, I don't know if I'm ever going to accomplish anything. Out of the abundance of the I, heart, the mouth speaks. I don't know if I'm ever going to be something. You know, I'm always going to be a loser. I'll never make an A. I'll, you know, I'll never get a promotion. I'll never get out of debt. And then we just, because we see it, then our words there's life and death in the power of our tongue because yeah. we just, and, and it feels real to our words because we've seen ourselves there over and over in our head. Did you know that the Lord told Abraham, he says, I'm going to make your seed as numerous as the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore. And I think one of the reasons he used those examples was because he lived uh, to where they got sand on their feet every day. Every day he had to deal and wash his feet and get the sand off. And then every night he didn't live in a city. He lived in a place where they could see the stars. And every night he saw the stars. And I think it was a constant reminder, day and night, something that was a visible thing to help him see that your seed is going to be this numerous. And let me use this example out of Genesis chapter 15. This is where the Lord appeared unto Abram. And um, it says... In verse 2, And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the servant of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And look at this in verse 5. It says, He brought him forth abroad, talking about he took him out of the tent, 
and said, Look now towards heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Did you know as long as Abraham was in that tent, he couldn't see the stars. All he could see is this ceiling, and this was the limit of his sight. So God had to bring him out from under that limitation so and getting him to look. And he says, this is how numerous your children are going to be. And did you know that every one of us really, we have these tents that we've been raised in, these limits that block us seeing what God wants us to be. And God is wanting to bring you out abroad so that you can look and see what God wants you to be. And this so is what good. we're trying to do here yeah. is to increase your vision and let you recognize it, man, the sky's the limit. We're dealing with an almighty God who has <laughs> nothing impossible Amen. to him. And yet That's most awesome. of us feel like we're draining God. We're overwhelming. Oh man, there, I mean, the creator of the universe lives inside of us. And that means that there is a creative anointing that you have to see how God inside of you wants to live through you in your life so that you don't look like everybody else in this world. That's just, That's awesome. man, the enemy doesn't want us to get that. He just wants us, okay, you're saved, but be be stuck saved, be boring saved, be, be dying <laughs> saved, right? But no, we're called to something so Amen. much more alive. And we've got another testimony we want to share one of our students that has yeah. been experiencing this. So yeah, this, this student really experienced the power of God and just, again, the reports of this world, what, what, you know, the restrictions of this world, but what the Word of God did within her life. I went through a major health battle when I was 15. I became legally blind and profoundly deaf for almost two years. Uh, it was due to toxic mold exposure compounded by multiple sports injuries. I actually began my journey really strong uh, with trusting that this wasn't gonna be my new normal. I was believing that eventually I would walk free again, but I grew weary as one thing after another after another chipped away at my hope. At my darkest moment though, in the middle of that season, God spoke to me and he said, you can focus on everything that you've lost or you can start to dream my dream for you. Uh, he showed me a ministry of a ranch that was his dream. It was his dream for me. Uh, I started to share this with my mom and when I did, it just started this domino effect of favor and connections leading us to launch a ranch established to connect the broken and hurting youth with abused and neglected horses. In this environment, it was so beautiful though because the hope uh, was reignited in me uh, to become whole and fulfill my purpose again. I started to picture myself seeing and hearing and living without pain, and I began to actually speak it over my life, and that was where that critical moment God met me where my faith was. Um, infirmities began to fall off of me. My DNA was rewritten. My vision and hearing went back to normal. In April 2019, I learned about Karis through attending a musical performance, and it revolutionized my world. I completed my first year of Karis through distance education and my second and third years at the main campus in Woodland Park. God doesn't disqualify you if you're in process. He gave me the vision in the middle of my mess. And during my third year at Global Training School, I was actually able to relocate the ranch that God showed me in that vision seven years ago. Um, Eighth Mountain Ranch is the name. And I've used the truth that I've learned here in Karis to bring redemption and sanctuary to others who are in the middle of their messes and to give them the opportunity to have a new beginning in Him. Man, that's awesome. That's exactly what we were talking Amen. about. <laughs> Said the Lord told her that she could either focus on her problems or yeah. she could focus on what God intended her to be. I'm and always she... crying after those testimonies. They're so <laughs> powerful. <laughs> but you know, this is exactly what we're trying to get across, that whether people realize it or not, the way you see yourself on the inside is the way your life goes. Your life goes in the direction of your dominant thought and not just thoughts, but what those thoughts picture, the picture, the image. And each one of us has an image on the inside of who we are and what we can do and what God can do with us. <clears throat> and excuse me, and most of us, it's not painted by the Word of God. It's painted by our experiences and maybe our 
parents said negative things about us or yeah. friends or failures or divorce. Or, or, yeah, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. You know what I loved what uh, Rachel was saying in that testimony is that she began to picture it and see herself that way. <clears throat> but what we were talking about before the testimony, that she began to speak it over her life. Mm -hmm. And that's where you, when we tell you to have a picture, we're not telling you to have a picture that's some godly, ungodly, worldly picture. No, of course we're talking about having a picture of life and prosperity and health and the victory that Jesus already accomplished for you on the cross. And the enemy's just trying to steal it. So you're telling him, no, I see it. And then you start speaking it. And that's where that faith and that power and that authority is released to see the changes, and that's how you are going to get to a place where you stop wishing God was doing something. You start receiving from God because you've come in line and say, I'm going to see myself the way the Word declares me to be. You know, there was a man, Don Crow, who uh, Carrie knows. Yeah, he was one, one of the teachers. He was one of the instructors in our school, and he ministered with me for decades, a very, very close friend. But I knew Don's dad, and his dad had a number of problems. And... Uh, he treated Don and the whole family bad. And actually he wound up committing suicide and wrote a suicide note and left it blaming his family. It's your fault. And he, wow. even in his death, he was trying to put things on him. But one of the things he said to Don, they had a bunch of junk cars around their property and they were always taking parts from them and doing things. And he told Don, he says, you're so stupid. You can't even screw a nut on a bolt without cross-threading it. And did you know when Don was with me, he was in his 30s and we were working on a car and I literally saw Don shake, putting a nut on a bolt. And he would put it on and he had put it on correctly, but he was so fearful that he had done it wrong that he would take it off and redo it. And I never saw Don put a nut on a bolt without cross-threading it. And that was because of an image that was put upon him by his father and... Uh, it's a shame, but you know, there's so many people watching this program that it may not be that obvious, but they've had an image put upon them, fo forced upon them by circumstances or people. Yeah. And it just puts a limit, like that uh, tent that we were talking about, Abraham, that he couldn't see what God really wanted him to see because he was dwelling in that tent. Yeah. We got to get out of that limitations and all of these things that the devil and people have put on us. Yeah. When you, you think about it, and one of the, the scriptures and I, I love is when it talks about, I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. Do you, do you perceive it? And I think that, that constantly comes to my brain. Like there's so many seasons of my life. The Lord's saying, I'm doing a new season. I'm doing a new thing. But then I say, can you perceive it? Can you begin to imagine it? Can you begin to line up with this new thing? And so many people are stuck in old seasons because they can never, they sense something, they, they hear messages, they hear sermons, their spirit gets excited, but they can't perceive it. And that's exactly what imagination allows. You start to see it. You start to put it into play in your heart and in your mind. And then you start to walk in that new thing because you're like, okay, I'm ready for a new thing. So let me ask you, I know uh, I first met you when you were like 10 years old. Yes. <laughs> used to go minister in that church. But you've known since you were a little girl that you were going to be a missionary. Yep. But how did you get from just knowing that you were going to be a missionary to know that you were supposed to go to Russia and, yep. and then all of the things that you've done? I bet you you had to apply exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Now, this is a really good example. So I, uh, my pastor had said, you know, God has a call of God on your life. Ask him and he'll show you. So I asked, and at 10 years old, God showed me. So don't whine and complain that God's not showing you. If a 10-year-old can hear it, so can you. You just got to ask the Lord and then have ears to hear. But I asked the Lord, and He showed me. And so I started reading missionary autobiographies and novels and things like that. And as that I... That was painting a picture on the inside of you. Oh, my gosh. If they could do it, you could do it. And you know what? Chapter 1 to chapter 10. Chapter 10, you know, Mother Teresa and Amy Carmichael and Nate Saint and all these amazing people were doing these incredible things. But chapter one always started with ordinary people that heard from God and chose to obey. And I thought, I can start, I, I'm chapter one. And I started to see that. And because of that, I was like, if God could do that, if I'm willing to take a first step and believe 
then God can do all these things if I'm willing to walk out that belief. And so I started seeing a picture and then every time missionaries came to our church, man, I was a little shadow, you know, falling around, helping them sell their books, asking them questions, uh, just sitting at dinner, listening to all their stories. And I would imagine myself in India and I would imagine myself in Africa. And I would imagine myself in Russia. We had a gentleman always talking about the Iron Curtain and them going behind the Iron Curtain and, and all the rush, the things that they would do in Russia. And I imagined myself in Russia. And then God started to do those things. I started taking some mission trips. And then when I came to Bible school, uh, and you know, people going. don't know this about you. You look at Carrie and she's all dressed nice and Not she earrings. always wears high heels and all of this <laughs> stuff, but she's a farm girl. Oh yeah. <laughs> and she, you talk about coming from uh, where- <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> coming from a farm girl and you worked in a service station and yep, I, I was a, you were homeschooled. I, and, I worked as, um, you know, I was, I was thinking about this the other day as I went into a gas station and the young girl behind the convenience store, she was, you know, bringing up my chips and soda. And I was like, that was me. Yeah. That was me decades ago. <laughs> but I thought that's where I started. And, and you but came, I always saw myself on the mission field. And you came from a very small town, Kit Carson. 350 people. And I mean, <laughs> Kit Carson isn't a stepping stone Not to impressive. any place. <laughs> and, and to see what God has done in your life, you just returned from Australia, Indonesia, Bali. You're Singapore. traveling the world. Yeah. I've been over, over 33 nations uh, and we've seen signs and wonders, miracles. I worked with Mother Teresa. I read about Mother Teresa and got to meet and work with Mother Teresa. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, my, uh, when I was 1996, I went on a mission trip, was in India for a full month, worked in the, the homes of the destitute and dying and got to meet Mother Teresa. Uh, and I remember this. This is so amazing because I read this whole story about Mother Teresa and just her walking this stuff out. And I remember having met her. We took a picture with her. We were in the, the main hall. We had just finished mass. We were invited to mass with her. And uh, she was doing an interview and I was just standing there listening to the interview. And she grabbed my hand and she looked at me and she said, young lady, you are a very special young lady. Wow. And I was like, I mean, I'd read about this woman when That's I was awesome. 11 and 12 years old. And here I am working and meeting and serving in the things that she was doing to change India. And so, man, don't, don't limit God. A it, farm girl from Kit Carson, <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> Amen. Man, that's awesome. Isn't that awesome? So we're about out of time. Tell them about what we're offering them, this master class, yeah. how they get it. Well, this master class is for you because we don't want you to be boring or stuck or dying anymore. We want you to be able to receive from God. So we have taken these truths that we have just barely scratched upon and we have put it into an intense four hour master class. Andrew, um, myself and my husband, we're going to be walking through just some powerful principles to teach you how to walk and activate these things within your life. So it's four lessons. It's got extra bonuses and worksheets and interaction. You'll be hearing from us. I'll be e emailing you and inviting you to some special things. So this is free. Master classes are really intense programs that a lot of people pay a lot of money for, and we want to give this to you. So it's for, for a very limited time only though. So you need to, even right now, go to charismasterclass.com or the number there on the screen, call our prayer line and our ministers will sign you up for that because we we need you to get this because it's not just for you. It's for truly the people that God has called you to reach. The devil doesn't want you to get this. So you need to get it today. And I tell you, if this will work for Carrie and if it'll work for me, <laughs> it'll work for anybody. Amen. You don't know where we've come from, <laughs> but I tell you what, it's God. Yeah. And it's the things that we're sharing are how we got there. And it's like, I heard somebody say this the last conference we had, we're leaving little breadcrumbs. Yeah. For you. And if you would follow these little breadcrumbs that we're putting out, it'll lead you to the same things that God has been doing in our life. And it's just awesome. Amen. That's Amen. Really good. So anyway, we love you. And we really want to see God's best come to pass in your life. I believe that God has led us to do this. And I'm just encouraging you to take advantage of it. It's free. So once again, listen to our announcer. He'll give you all the information about how to receive this master class. And so please listen and then call are right today and receive this master class on how to receive from God. Receive from God. <laughs> Amen.
Today, Andrew's offering his brand new Keras Masterclass free of charge. Simply visit the website at charismasterclass.com and enter your email to gain free access. Do you desire to see the promises of God become real in your daily life, but you aren't sure how? Well, through this masterclass, you'll understand God's path for receiving what He's already provided for you. You'll learn the simple steps needed to overcome lies and self-sabotaging habits and start experiencing life as He intended. By signing up for free at CurisMasterclass.com, you'll gain access to the interactive masterclass, including video teachings, worksheets, and other bonuses. This exclusive offer is only available for a short time and is closing soon. Sign up for your free Keras Masterclass at CurisMasterclass.com. We hope this resource is a blessing to you. Ninety percent of youth active in church will drop out of church by their sophomore year of college. Seventy-two percent of college faculty members describe themselves as politically liberal, and seventy percent of Christian youth will completely abandon their faith. Give your graduate a lasting, firm foundation in the Word of God and their identity. I do believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that there are students graduating from high school for whom Karis is the absolute, perfect next step. I knew that Karis was going to be a place where I was going to learn about um, the Bible, about Christ, about God, who I was and whose I was. One of the main reasons I wanted to come was I wanted to get God's love for me and like understand that. And like when I started getting a revelation of that and just realizing that how much He loved me, like that's what really started to set me free. When you send your children to Karis, I think it's the best thing that you could do for your child. I know that for me, watching Ashley go through those two years and changing and becoming the strong, godly woman that she is, I don't think she could have found that anywhere else. When I came to Caris Bible College, I get to renew my mind, and now I, I believe that I'm gonna be ready to someday me be able to fulfill God's call for my life and to be able to teach other people, to disciple other people. I mean, I love the teaching. The teaching is just, it's, it's blue chip, you know, it's, it's top notch. And then also, you know, it's just like a big family here. I mean, it's, we all care about each other, and. We all just have a good time with each other and, you know, strongly recommend Karis Bible College as a place to send your kids, especially if they're not sure, you're not sure what they're going to need to be doing. Preparation time is never wasted time. I don't know what other Bible colleges teach, but this one's definitely got it right. So if you want to get the Word of God and you want to get it in its purest form for what it really is, you've got to come to Karis. I, I truly feel like it's a little piece of heaven on earth. Um, you don't find like a large group of people like this anywhere else. There's no reason to not attend Karis Bible College. It is foundational. It's for anybody who's looking to further their relationship with God, who's looking to go into ministry and preparing for that. And there's just no reason not to. That's a good choice to go to Karis to get that foundation, to give them, whether it's a year or two years or three years, um, it's a good foundation. This is a college that God has ordained and established for the purpose of launching an entire generation into the world to change the world and to change the way that it sees Him. God has a purpose for every one of you. He doesn't enforce it and make you follow it, but I can guarantee you God has never planned for anybody to be a failure. Jesus has come to set us free. He's come to set you free from death on every level. He wants to heal you. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He's not out to get you. He's out to bless you. There's going to be words spoken throughout the next three days that are going to be transformative and necessary for us to step into the call that the Lord has on our lives.